Hey guys, we're going to start off a new series learning programming in Python. We're going to use the popular book Python Crash Course to learn about the very basics of Python, but also to cover more advanced concepts such as working with APIs, data visualization and web application development using Django. This is going to be a multi-part series, so feel free to subscribe to the channel to get notified about any new videos and also leave a like down below. We're going to start out with the very basics. If you would like to follow along, please feel free to follow the link in the description down below to actually get the book. So let's get right into it. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the basic outline. In the first part, we'll cover the basics of Python, install Python at our text editor and learn about basic language constructs, such as variables, lists and if statements. We'll also cover how to use functions and also classes and how we can test our code. In the second part, we'll then dive into different projects. We'll start out with building a 2D game, Alien Invasion, continue with data visualization and also with web application development. At the end, we'll be able to program our own applications and have a good overview of what we can use Python for. So let's get right into it by installing Python and our text editor. On Windows, you can open the command window and enter Python in lowercase. If you get a Python prompt, Python is already installed on your system. However, if you see an error message instead, you need to download a Python installer. To do that, just go to python.org and download the latest version for Windows from the download section. Once installed, go back to the command line, enter Python to start the Python interpreter, and then enter the command print hello Python interpreter to print out the text. And to close the terminal, just press Ctrl Z and then press enter or just enter exit as a command. Instead, if you use macOS or Linux, Python is most likely already installed but we should check that it is a current version, so Python 3.6 or newer. To do that, we can open the terminal by pressing the command and space key, and then we can enter a command terminal, which opens the terminal window for us. And from here, we can enter Python 3, to check if we are using the latest version of Python, so Python 3. Most likely Python 2 is already installed, so you would need to update to Python 3. Now in this case, I already installed Python 3.9, so that's already available on the system. But if you get an error message here, or if you're using an older version of Python, for example, Python 3.2, then it makes sense to download the latest version. So for that, we can simply go to python.org and here under Downloads, we can simply download the latest version for macOS. And once we've done that, once we've downloaded and installed Python, we can go back to our terminal here and just type Python 3 again. And now we are inside of the Python interpreter and we can enter a simple command. So for example, print hello Python interpreter and once we press enter we can see this is actually printed out so that means it works properly. So next let's install Sublime Text which is our text editor that we're going to be using which is supported by Windows, macOS and also by Linux. So to do that we can head back to our browser and navigate to sublimetext.com and from here, we can simply download the latest version for Windows, Mac, or for Linux. And once we downloaded the latest version, we can, of course, install it following the installation steps and then open Sublime Text. So I already opened Sublime Text here. And once we install it, the first thing we need to do is to go to Tools at the very top and then select Build System and choose new build system. We want to make sure that we actually run Python 3 whenever we execute a file, so we're using the latest version of Python. And to do that, we can initially just remove everything 
that's in this file here and instead we're going to open and close curly braces and in between we're going to type out this command command and then python3 and we don't need to understand this particular command it's just a setup we need to make uh, in order to make sure that we actually are using python3 now once we entered this in here we can simply save that file and just save it in the default location and then this will be saved so next let's actually create a new folder called python underscore work somewhere on the computer so for example here i just created it on my desktop and inside of this folder here we can then simply create a new file so to do that we can open sublime text again we can go to file new file and then we can directly save it from here we would select our folder so in case here python work and then we can create a new file called hello underscore world.py we always need to end those kind of files in .py to tell sublime that this is actually a python file and then sublime will highlight that accordingly to basically have the highlighting the syntax highlighting for python code so let's save this here and now we saved an empty file and all we need to do is to add a single line of code so we typing print and then in parentheses, we are going to enter hello python world exclamation mark. We're going to save that. And then we want to run our code. And the easiest way to do that is to simply go back up to tools. And then from here to select build. And you can see already that here at the bottom, we have hello python world exclamation mark printed out. So we executed our code file. And this is how we are going to run most of our files that we are working with directly from the text editor. As a hint, if you want to, you can also just press Ctrl B on Mac or Ctrl B on Windows. And this is going to execute the current file as well and is going to build it. So that's a handy shortcut that we can use. But occasionally we may want to run our files not from inside of our text editor, not from inside of Sublime Text, but instead we may want to run it from our terminal. And that's possible as well, of course. In order to do that, we would open our terminal again and navigate to the folder where we actually created our Python file. So in our case here, we saved that in python underscore work, which is on the desktop. We are entering the command cd, which stands for change directory, to navigate to this folder. And once I press enter, we are inside of that folder. On Mac or Linux, we can type ls to list all the content, all the files inside of that particular folder. On Windows, you would type in dir to show the content of the directory. And once we are inside of that folder, we can simply run python, followed by the name of the file. And one handy tip here, is if we just start typing out the name of the file we can press tab and this is going to autocomplete the name of the file and once we press enter we basically get the same output here hello python world as we got here at the bottom inside of sublime text so that's just another way how we can execute our code so there are actually a couple of short exercises in the book as part of the first chapter, the first one is to take a look at python.org, the website where we downloaded Python before, and to find some topics that interest us. And as we become more familiar with Python, we will find different parts of the site that will be more and more useful to us. So if you go back to that website here, to python.org, we can find that there is some helpful documentation here. So for instance, there's a beginner's guide covering the first steps of Python. There's a developer's guide, frequently asked questions, and we have also some audio and visual talks that we could explore. So those are some great resources to dive a little bit deeper into Python right away. The next exercise is to take a look at the 
hello world file that we wrote before and we should create some typo and then run the program again. And we should try if we can create a typo that actually generates an error and if we can make sense of that error message. So let's take a look at that and let's open Sublime Text again to open our code file. So of course we could just start out by changing the text here. So maybe we want to change it to hello there. Save that again and then again by pressing Control B or Command B on Mac, we can just execute the file again and now we can see we get the output hello there. But if we actually made some other change, so for example we don't write print but print A for example, and we save that and run that again, you can see right away that we get a red error message here, something's wrong. And if we take a look at the output here at the bottom, we can see that we actually get a name error because the name print A is not defined. We will learn more about that when we take a look at functions and also at variables. Um, but basically what's happening here is the code editor does not understand what print A means because it's not a valid command in Python. And here's also a traceback which basically shows us where the error occurs. So here in line one inside of our hello world.py file. And in a similar way, we could make some other changes. So for example, we could remove quotation marks here at the end, save this and run the code again. And this time we're going to get a different kind of error, a syntax error, which states that EOL, which stands for end of line, has an error while scanning our string literal. We will learn more about that later, but basically what's happening here is that we opened what's called a string, so some kind of text, but we never closed it. And therefore Python doesn't know how to handle it and we basically get that error message. So in this case here, it actually points us in our stack trace to the right location. So here at the end, after hello there, there should be a closing quote. So let's do that, let's save that and let's run it again. And of course, then we fixed our error. And we'll take a closer look at those kind of errors, what they mean in detail when we learn more about Python. And finally, as the third exercise here, if we had infinite programming skills, what would we build? So the idea here is really that we basically create a notebook of ideas that we want to work on, some programs that we want to build out, and that we keep track of that. And later on, as we get more and more familiar with, with Python, we will be able to actually build those kind of ideas out and to create our, note, our own programs that address those kind of ideas that we have. So we learned how to install Python and also Sublime Text and also how we can run simple programs either directly from Sublime Text or from our terminal. In the next video we are going to focus on variables and also lists in Python. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel to get notified about any new videos and if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section down below. See you guys in the next video.